Uh, greetings and welcome to another in a continuing series of educational rounds here at Seclair, uh, where we attempt to bring some enlightenment, some things into your life, offer enhancements to everyday living. I'm Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist at Seclair, a integrative holistic psychiatric facility. And today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... My name is Marisa Fornida. I'm a physician assistant student here at Seclair. And on my right would be... My name is Abby Brown. I'm also a physician assistant student here at Seclair. And today is a good day. Today is a good day. Uh, today we're going to be discussing uh, spirituality, uh, music, and mental health, and how all the three mix together to perhaps enhance your life and make a life worth living. Let me ask you out there, would you like to, would you like to live life out loud? I would. I would love that. You'd like to live life life yeah. out loud. Mm -hmm. What would you when I, when I say living life out loud? Uh, what would that mean to you, Abby? Screaming mm -hmm. on a screaming on the street. No, I think just you know doing the things that you want to do in, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Don't let somebody hold you back. You mm -hmm. know, if you want to do something, then do it. You bet. Mm -hmm. And life life is happening. When is life happening? Right now. Is it right now? Yep. And where would you be at right I'm now? Right here. You're right here. And what time is it? right now it's right now so what I'm asking everyone in our audience both the viewing and listening to ask yourself where am I when you find yourself wondering you can ask yourself where am I and you are right wherever you are I am right here and it is right now uh, today we're going to be discussing again the spirituality the uh, music and uh, mental health so could you say what type, tell us what type of music that you prefer listening to Depends on my mood, honestly. Um, when I'm happy, some happy stuff. Maybe if I'm more relaxed, some Dave Matthews band. <laughs> okay. Abby, is there some type of music that generally, let's say if you're feeling down, is there something that you listen to that would lift your spirits? Well, I listen to Christian music a lot of times, okay. especially when I feel sad. And uh, how, does that, how does that help you? How does that interact with your life? Makes me feel more positive and lets me know that, you know, there's a reason why I'm here and... I'm important, and yeah. So tell me, tell me how this music makes you feel that way. Well, I mean, with what I believe, um, usually that music is talking about God and Jesus and um, all the things He's done for us and how important we all are and how much He loves us. So that just reminds me about how loved I am and that I'm an important person on this earth and just makes me feel a lot better. So what I'm hearing you say is this music can interact with your mood and elevate it and take you perhaps out of a funk and make you realize what you're grateful for. Yes. Okay. And you, Marisa? Um, the, uh, the, the music and mood? Oh, yeah. Music does affect my mood a lot. Like I said, if I'm happy, I'll listen to happy music. But um, even when I'm sad, I'll try and listen to happy music maybe just to like boost my spirits because sometimes I feel like when I do listen to sad music when I'm sad, it kind of makes it worse. So um, I really connect with music in my moods. So most of the time myself, I listen to contemplative, uh, some type of meditation type of music like Snot and Kaur or different th things like that. However, every now and then, being ancient and I'm an old acid rocker, <laughs> I often uh, will turn on something like Ramstein or uh, some type of uh, liquid metal type of music to clear out, clear out my ears mm -hmm. so I can begin to fill up the tank again. That that would be just great. So, and again, uh, here at Seclair, where we take a holistic view of an individual, mind, body, and spirit, we do not treat diagnoses, we treat people, which would be examining every single part of aspect of a human being's life, which involves sleep, which involves nutrition, which involves uh, activities, which involves sociability, which involves nutrition, and certainly spirituality. Spirituality. What does spirituality mean to you, Abby? To me, it is some type of connection, whether it's with God or a higher power or the environment, something that just brings your soul alive. Sure. And to uh, you, Marisa? Kind of the same as Abby. Um, just something that kind of connects with your soul and something that kind of gives you a motivation to connect yourself with. Right. And sometimes when people come in, they have anxiety, their depression, their snots, their, their emotions are scattered. Are they not? Mm -hmm. And we've certainly dealt with patients who have been scattered. Are they not? Yes, so quite often we talk about the difference between listening and hearing. Do mm -hmm. we not? Yep. Could you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah. So 
hearing, basically you're hearing the sounds that are coming into your ears. Listening is when you're actually being aware of what's being said and you're understanding it and you're processing it and you're kind of taking the meaning out of what's being heard. Absolutely. So what you were telling me about the music that you prefer, when you're hearing that, we're here, you're here and in the moment and you're there right mm -hmm. now. It, it, it centers you. Yes. Is that correct? Yep. Excellent. Excellent. And, and music certainly has that power. Mm -hmm. What we do is we center ourselves in that in that moment and begin to begin to begin to flow with the music. Music, music is also structured. Yep. Is it not? And it provides it, music provides some structure mm -hmm. in people's in people's lives. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today. And mm -hmm. right now I'm going to be asking uh, some other guests that we've uh, fortunate enough to have in our uh, studio today. And that would be my dear friend Dr. Ruth Ann Valentine and my other dear friend uh, James Buckley. Welcome, James. Hi, how are you doing, Jim? Just grand. Dr. Valentine. Good to be here, So, James. so good. To, it's good to be anywhere. Yes. And especially good to be right here with you. That's it's right. always, always a good thing to be with friends. Uh, James, I understand that you have something to perform for us. Yeah, I was going to uh, play a song that I had written a few years ago. And uh, it, it's a spiritual song. I actually performed it in a church uh, many times. And I... The song was written, uh, initially it was inspired to uh, help others that were struggling with uh, uh, family members that were sick. So, you want me to do that now? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's called God of Love. <laughs> Can you hear me? We need you so bad. Help us have faith and be strong. Hear our voice in this song. We know that you've always been there. We just need some more of your mercy and love from the heavens above. God of love, God of light, God of power, God of might, God of hope, God would pray, take this pain away, take it away. Your love is the strength for us all. We feel it each day and hear our voice speak Sometimes we feel weak We know you have plans for us all We feel it each day Can you hear our voice speak? Sometimes we feel weak God of love, God of light, God of power, God of might, God of hope, God we pray, take this pain away, take it away. care 
God of hope, God of light, God of power, God of might, God we love, God we pray, take this pain away. God of love, God of light, God of power, God of might, God of hope, God we pray, take this pain away, take it away. Take it away. Very nice, Dan. Very, Thank very you. nice. That uh, that sounds like that song came from your heart in a certain time in your life. <laughs> it did, and there's a little bit of a story about it. I'll make it real quick if you want to hear that. But uh, I had stayed home. My family went to church. And I stayed at home, and her father was very sick, and that's why I wrote this song. So they went to church, and I figured while they were gone, I would write this song. So Mattis took us, up, took us about an hour. So I wrote the song in an hour, and they came back, and my wife was not happy with me because the dishes weren't washed. <laughs> and then she found out later that what I was actually doing was writing this song, so she forgave me on that one. Excellent. <laughs> so... When I was uh, younger, Ruth Ann, quite often I would hear that uh, when you sing, you pray twice. I've heard that too, James. And and what does that really mean? It it means that something is coming from my heart as well as my mouth. And so there's a deep relationship and oneness and a unity that happens. And and in my work with uh, patients, wonderful people who so oftentimes teach me. Uh, I will integrate music. I'm not a musician like uh, James is. But one person in particular, he was having a difficult time with anger. And so I asked him to bring in some music that he connected with, and, and he brought in some heavy metal music. And we did listen to a CD, that uh, song that he did like. And I watched him connect with that, uh, the lyrics, and, and his affect began to soften and and his mood began to improve so there is a very uh it's medicine music is medicine and and so i i integrate it often well we're going to be throwing some cliches around today uh james have you ever heard the one music soothes the savage beast yes I... yes so yes. i'm going to ask uh, dr valentine in her practice and in her career how she's seen that work well, I gave you one example. Yes. And, and so whenever I'm working with a person who is struggling with anger and has internalized the anger, the, the biggest challenge I have is helping them to express it in a, in a uh, healthful, appropriate way so that uh, that anger can be transformed into to energy that can be productive. Quite often uh, what I'll do, what we do is ask, people to take those repressed thoughts and feelings out of here and bring them out here. Yes. And quite often I'll ask people to, to journal, I'll ask them to mm -hmm. write that down, and quite often we'll repeat those words into the air. Okay, we'll offer them up. Yes. We'll offer them up. And James, what you're saying is sometimes that you take those thoughts and feelings and you indeed write them down and offer them up in song. Absolutely. And uh, when I was working at the hospital, uh, some of the patients there would actually write down some lyrics for me and I would put them to songs. So that was one, one of the uh, practices and that, we, that we ran uh, there. And also, you know, Soothing the Savage Beach, Beast, because in between the shifts of the staff there at the hospital, the patients would get kind of chaotic. So we went, I went there in between the shift change and soothed them, and there was no chaos. They were settled down and had a great time. They call it elevator music for a reason, do they not? <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Lauder, James, yes. James, on one occasion, I was uh, uh, a group facilitator, and we created a, the theme was around anger, and we created a poem. And each one of the attendees 
uh, added a line to the poem. Mm. And then at the end, it was quite a beautiful prompt poem and very healing for everybody. And so uh, we began that experience first with a meditation and then we started a one person created their line and 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 at the end we read the poem together. sounds beautiful yeah it is that is beautiful it's, it's similar to journaling mm -hmm. but it, i it it's lyrical like james the song and if james were there he probably could sing it for us i like that idea so i'm going to steal it okay you go with it. <laughs> So the idea here is that quite often we listen to music, James, that we relate to, do we not? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's like uh, I always say that we, we have our lives and our lives are so different, but there is music that, behind our lives and that is sort of the score, just like in a movie, the uh, music can be the score of our lives. So, and both James and uh, my friend Ruth Ann know that our practice is based on mindfulness. Yes. And we're constantly looking for ways to people to bring them into the moment. Mm -hmm. Into the moment. Yes. And it's very difficult to have scattered or racing thoughts mm -hmm. when we're concentrating and we're singing a song. James, uh, or, excuse me, uh, there's two James here. James, this one over here, uh, creating that poem in the group, there were no racing thoughts. Everyone was focused. They were being mindful. As I said, we started with meditation, and they knew what their job was. And in the end, we had this beautiful poem that could uh, was music. When we find ourselves time traveling, we often uh, look for ways to focus it. And sometimes it's just like a mechanic. Yes. One tool doesn't work. So we pull out another one That's right. to use that day. And what That's we're right. trying to offer people is tools. And what we're asking individuals is not only to listen to others' song, what we're attempting here at Seclair is to ask people to make a song in their life. Yes. Right. To make life their song. That's right. To live their song. That's right. Find their voice. Mm -hmm. Yes, that just their voice alone is a song. Mm -hmm. And that's that's how we live. We live in song. We don't. We just don't think of it that way. We think we're talking. We're actually we're singing a song of our life. I want to add to that. Our life has rhythm. And and there's all kinds of rhythm. Indeed. High notes, low notes. There are there are high and low notes. That's a, that's, that's right. excellent. That's right. Excellent. So the idea here is that music is also structured, James. So many, so many individuals that we deal with, Ruth Ann, have unstructured lives, yes. unstructured thoughts, unstructured emotions, unstructured behavior. And the structure of music, perhaps you could speak to us a little bit about the structure of music, James. Yes. I mean, it's, uh, every, everything is, uh, is in a rhythm. There's a rhythm. There's a beat. Uh, and and that so speaks for our lives as well. We you know our heartbeat is is one of those rhythms as uh, as we have found out uh, the rhythm of walking uh, as our good friend uh, Janelle has explained to us before. Uh, so so music will you know will, will have a time and a cadence to it, just as our lives. So it's really you know can can you know fit our lives quite well. In what we do, and if we're in a, a fast-moving uh, situation where we're very busy doing stuff one after the other, and it's almost like such a faster beat that's going on. <laughs> uh, yet when we're relaxed and we're, we're calm and calm down, and we're just reading a book or something like that, we're we're at a slower pace. And so music is built the same way. And it is very structured. You know, there's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. There's a chorus. There's a hook which is uh, something that you would remember a song by and, and repeat it like all day long. You'd be singing a song to yourself. Well, that's a hook that does that. So those are the things that move people and, 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 and make, help make them uh, you know, do things that they may need to do. So it, it's very useful in that sense. If you create a song that has a hook in it that people will sing the whole day, it might be something very powerful to them and help them get through a day and not be so you know, uh, wrapped up in all the all the chaos and stuff that may go on. So yes. Lots of chaos, lots of drama. All the time, James. Music can draw a very confused, unstructured person uh, into the place where they are 
uh, with the beat. They could tap their foot. They could hum. And it, it helps to take them out of their inner world of chaos. So what would be a suggestion for you to perhaps a listener who's having some racing thoughts at the moment, having some confused uh, ideas and emotions? Uh, my recommendation is to stand up and slowly walk and walk mindfully. Begin to hum and hum according to the, the pace that you are walking. I recommend that you walk slowly. You may want to even to count uh, the steps that you are taking and even make a little rhyme out of this, uh, the, the number that you are counting. So that in its simple way, James, can help decrease the confusion and the chaos that's happening inside. So what again, what we want to do is that the mindfulness aspect, we want to draw people out of the, the, the scattered time traveling yes. and focus, draw them into focus and be in their present moment. That's right. That was, uh, that was an excellent idea. Any final thoughts for us today, James? Uh, I just, uh, you know, take... Take the time to bring music into your life if you haven't. If you if you're have, have your days going on without music in your life, uh, find a way, whether it's in the car, put on some headphones, uh, your favorite music, and, and that will help you get through the day. Ruthann? James, it was wonderful to be here with you today, and, and may we continue to live our life with music. Live your, and when we talked earlier about living our life out loud, is exactly what we meant. Live your life out loud. Find your own song. Find your own voice in your life. And as always, we offer you a free prescription at the end of each podcast. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Take up fishing. And unplug your TV. And for a truly mindful experience, we invite everyone to fish without bait when you live your life without expectations. And I just want to remind everybody, you can find us available on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter once a week. And to continue this conversation, please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter under Seclair Life. Uh, you can also find this and other Grand Rounds on YouTube.com slash Video. And find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit www seclair.com for more information about us and other articles on our great blog and as always your assignment is to be good to yourself today and as an additional homework assignment i'm asking each one of you to show some small kindness to another until next time thank you